What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so this is a requested video from one of my subscribers. Uh, they wanted me to rank these four NBA centers on a historical uh, perspective or basis. These centers being Amari Stoudemire, even though Amari also played power forward at times. Amari Stoudemire, Patrick Ewing, Joel Embiid, and David Robinson. Right now, I think we can all agree that the lesser of these four players is Amari Stoudemire. Okay, uh, I don't know where I would rank him historically on top of my head, but if I had to give a guess, um, I wouldn't even have him probably in my top 125, 150. Um, you know, maybe even lower than that. Uh, he never won a championship. Uh, I don't think he ever, no, he never appeared in the finals. Uh, never won a league MVP. Uh, let's look at his resume. All right, he was 6'10", 245 pounds. And uh, he played for the Phoenix Suns. The Knicks, the Mavericks, the Heat, and then afterward, you know, he played in some overseas leagues. He was a six-time NBA All-Star. He was on the All-NBA first team in 2007, four times on the All-NBA second team. Uh, he was the Rookie of the Year in 2002-2003 Session Award, so obviously he was on the Rookie uh, first team. And for his career, he averaged uh, 18.9 points, 7.8 rebounds, 1.2 blocks per game. The biggest criticism, one of the biggest criticisms I had of Amari Stoudemire was that I thought he was a very uh, poor rebounder for his position. As you can see by the 7.8 rebounds, he was not a great rebounder for his position, but he was a great interior scorer, a very explosive player, especially before the uh, the injury. I think it was injuries to his knees, I think it was. Uh, but I would rank him fourth out of all these guys right now. Now, number three... For right now, right now, right now would be Joel Embiid. Number three, I would have number uh, Joel Embiid number three. Because uh, I don't do the projecting thing. You know, a lot of people project, and that's their right to do so, but I tend to go by what you've accomplished. I go, I go by, like, what if your career ended tomorrow? How would I rank you then? Some people project. I I think it's a mistake to do that because if you projected where Grant Hill would be in 1997, you would have been a top 20 all-time player. So you just never know what's down the line with these guys. But Joel Embiid, I mean, if I, off the top of my head, I would probably rank him right now as a top 75 player um, already. That That's how great he is. Uh... He's the he's the most dominant player in the NBA right now, although he is injured, and that does go against him because he has a history of Ill, of, of injuries. Uh, but he is the most dominant player in the NBA when he's healthy. So I would right now have him just entering that top seventy five trajectory, especially off the strength of what should have been a second MVP season. But him winning the MVP was big last year. So he's going to be the seven feet tall. 280 pounds. Uh, it does have, has had a history of conditioning issues. Uh, last year won the MVP award. Seven time NBA All Star. All NBA first team. Four times All NBA second team. Uh, last year was the first time it was All NBA first team. Three times NBA All Defensive second team, and that's important. Two time scoring champion. He was uh, NBA all, on the NBA All Rookie first team. And for his career, he averages, right now as, he, as, he, as he's in the peak of his career, he's averaging, I'll have to check that. It's not posted right there, I guess because he's still playing. For his career, in 428 games, he's averaging 27.8 points, 11.2 rebounds, 3.6 assists per contest, shooting 50.4% from the floor. And 82.5% from the free throw line. 
And he has a career PR rating of 28.4. Uh, which, right now, if he was eligible, would make him the most efficient player in NBA history, I believe. Let me see something. Let's see something. Yeah, Nikola Jokic right now is technically the most efficient player of all time. And second, Michael Jordan. Third, LeBron James. Fourth, Anthony Davis. But I think it's a certain amount of games you have to play to qualify because uh, Joel Embiid's PR rating for his career is 28.4 which is higher than Jokic's but I don't think he's qual he qualifies because of the amount of games he's played uh, but yeah off the strength of his career I put him third just ahead of him is Patrick Ewan um, Ewan as a player I have him ranked like top Probably top 40 Patrick Ewan and of course Patrick Ewan does not have an MVP award but what Ewan has in his favor in my opinion is his longevity now his career was a bit of a disappointment a bit of a disappointment considering that when he was drafted back in 85 many people thought that he would lead the Knicks back uh, to a championship one day and maybe it would have happened if he hadn't ran to Michael Jordan and Kim Olajuwon. Uh, he was seven feet tall, 255 pounds, 240 to 255 when he played. 11-time um, NBA All-Star. He was an All-NBA first team in 1990. Six times All-NBA second team. Three times NBA All-Defensive second team. He was a 1985-86 Rookie of the Year. So, of course, he was on the All-Rookie first team that year. He's on the 50th and 75th anniversary teams and is number 33 retired by New York Knicks. He scored 24,815 points in his career, or averaged 21 points a game. He grabbed 11,617 rebounds, or 9.8 .8 rebounds, and blocked 2,894 shots, or 2.4 blocks per contest. And, uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Let me go back uh, to Amari Stoudemire. There's one couple. One thing I forgot to mention uh, with these players. And the Olympics. That, that's important too. Um, Amari Stoudemire won the FIBA American Championship in 2007. The gold in 2007 in Las Vegas with that team. The 2004 Olympic team, of course, he was on that team in Athens, but of course they infamously came in with just the bronze. And um, I don't believe Joel Embiid was ever, I don't, has he ever been on an Olympic team? I don't recall that. No. Patrick Ewan, of course, was on the 1992 dream team that won it all, one of the most dominant teams of all time. In 1984, he was on the Olympic team as an amateur in Los Angeles, won Olympic gold. So he won two. He has two Olympic gold medals, and he won the FIBA, excuse me, the Americas Championship in 1992 in Portland in team competition. So Pat Ewan. I would have as the second ranked. And Derrick Robinson has become quickly one of the most underrated players in NBA history. I think it's because of the fact that Tim Duncan is greater, obviously, but Derrick Robinson was very important for those first two championships. Derrick Robinson was a two-time NBA champion. Oh, by the way, I would have Derrick Robinson 
<clears throat> somewhere around the top 20 to 25 all-time player. Two-time NBA champion. Uh, won the MVP award in 1995. Ten-time All-Star. Four times All-NBA first team. Two-time All-NBA second team. Four times All-NBA third team. Won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 1992. Four times NBA All-Defensive first team. Four times NBA All-Defensive second team. Won five IBM awards, 1990, 91, and 94 to 96. Won the Sportsmanship Award in 2001. 2003, his last season, won the J. Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award. Won the scoring title in 1994, famously by scoring 71 points. I believe it was the last game of the season against the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, led the league in rebounding in 1990-91. He was the last rebounding type champion, not named Dennis Rodman, for eight years. Led the league in blocks in 1992. Was rookie of the year in 1990. All-NBA rookie team, uh, first team in 1990. Is on the 50th and 75th anniversary teams. Number 50 retired by the San Antonio Spurs. Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year in 2003. Averaged 21.1 points, 10.6 rebounds, and three blocks per game in his career. As far as his Olympics career, he won the bronze in Seoul in 1988. That's the last Olympics where pros were not allowed. In 1992 in Barcelona, the Dream Team won, of course, gold. And he was also uh, on the 1996 team in Atlanta that won gold as well. He won the World Championships in 1986 in Spain and the Pan American Games 1987 in Indianapolis won the silver. So, and the FIBA Americas Championship in 1992 in Portland, gold in men's basketball competition. So, that's the ranking. I will have Dave Robinson number one, Patrick Ewing number two, Joel B number three, and, and starter mine number four. Now, if Joel B continues to lead the, the Philadelphia 76ers to uh, playoffs and final appearances at least, um, definitely a championship. A championship in itself would push Joel B. This year, if he if they could somehow get him back and win a championship, I would put him over Pat Ewing a- after this year. That's how much he would jump up, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, that's just my uh, that's my opinion. Tell me what you guys think.